football parallels life. You know, that's one thing I learned as I was playing this game. You know, football, it's a very strategic game. It's, it's not just brawn, it's mental. But you have to train yourself, practice. Same in life. You know, you have to work hard to do well in your job or to speak well so that you can nail a job interview. Robbie Abraham, I didn't realize he started this whole thing, and he, I saw him lead this, this group and talk about football. I met Hammer for the first time at the 2011 tournament. Um, at that point, I had only ever just heard about Robbie. You know, I've never met him, before, you know, and he was just loving. As homage to him, you know, we call uh, you know every tournament, every summer tournament, we have what's called uh, the All Hammer List. And I don't know if if everybody knows that it's you know out of out of respect for him that we that we call it that list. He always invited the guys whenever we played football to Bible studies after football. And at first I was hesitant because it didn't really grab me. It didn't really interest me. Why, why would I go? It doesn't interest me. I like football, but because of that respect I have for him, I was willing to listen to what else he said, what else he talked about, which was the, the word. I think that's what's the great thing about MFL is you know you know we had a vision where hey we want to you know reach out to people and create relationships so we can share the gospel but the great thing is when you create those relationships god just works god just works and god just speaks People talk about, hey, who's a bad person? And I just felt, hey, I was okay. I was good. I mean, hey, you know, I kind of did my, you know, partying and the girls thing, you know, uh, at the same time went to church and I felt, you know, I was, I was good. Uh, I didn't think much of that, anything else. Uh, really felt that all paths lead to God. Although I would say that if someone asked me when I went to church, you know, I was, you know, a Christian, I really didn't know what that meant. They started picking up people that, hey, Let's, we need some people to help lead the church youth group. And by default, you know, uh, there are a few of us that were chosen to the fact we were the older kids there. I was, you know, frankly a little concerned. If I'm gonna be leading these kids and talking about church, there's probably some things in my life I'm not too happy about that I'm doing, that I really felt yeah, I'd be a hypocrite. There were a couple other folks uh, with me uh, that were different. These were folks that weren't in the partying scene. And typically I think of these people that weren't cool. I would never hang out with these type of guys, uh, guys or girls, because they didn't really do the things I did. But I started hanging out with them and doing church activities. I'm like, oh, these guys are pretty cool. There was something different about them. I felt like a lot of the friends I was hanging out with, uh, although great friends, I just felt there was still a lot of superficialness to what we're doing. Uh, and I felt with these folks, there was something a little bit deeper and different. And so as part of it, what they would do is actually, they were attending a Bible study during the week. And so they asked, hey, you know, hey, Robbie, do you want to come and attend the Bible study? And I was like, yeah, no, that's not for me, not interested. I don't believe in the Bible. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Then over time, um, don't know what it was. It's one of those things where they asked me one of the evenings, hey, do you want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, didn't have a Bible. You just went ahead and went with them to their Bible study, which was very you know, close to their house. So then what happened, I started coming back every week. A lot of things started making sense. And then I started coming to conclusions, you know, even outside of Bible study, hey, this stuff is either true or it's not true. There is there is no middle ground, there's no in between. It's either true or not true. I started reading the Bible on my own for the very first time in my life. And I was reading through the book and I came to this verse. It was 1 John 2, 6. Whoever believes in him must walk as Jesus did. And at that point, uh, I, I just broke down. Everything that I thought didn't make sense before made complete sense to me. It was a moment where I realized, you know, who I was, that, hey man, you know what? Uh, I've got a messed up life, but I don't need to clean myself up to come to Jesus and come to God. Come to him first and help clean me up. It's stuff I've been learning as well. And so at that moment um, is when I decided that I want to follow Jesus. When that happened, it wasn't like my life changed overnight, but it was amazing what did start happening with me. All of a sudden, the things that I did desire, I just didn't desire that anymore. And before when I was struggling about, you know, hey, I'm gonna miss this, all of a sudden, I don't miss it anymore.
one verse stuck out for me uh, growing up, you know, once I became a Christian, it was, you know, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. It is, uh, be watchful, uh, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and be strong. And, and that verse really stuck out to me because one thing I didn't realize is when we were doing the church youth group, there were just a lot of girls and there weren't a lot of guys for whatever reason. And I, I, I kind of relate to myself where, hey, when you're a guy, you, know, you want to be strong, you want to be cool, you don't want to let people in. It's it's hard to be vulnerable. And I think one of the things I've been learning as you kind of grow as a Christian is in order to really connect with people uh, and connect with the Lord well, you got to be vulnerable. Say, hey, let's start, let's start playing football together. And so what we want to do was create an environment where, hey, we invite guys to play football, didn't matter how good they were. Uh, actually, that we didn't care at all. We didn't know if they were bad or, or good, but we wanted them to come and see. Guys would come that you know were confident in playing, we try to get them involved in the game and try to throw them the ball and try to help them to love the game as much as we loved it. You know, I, at first it was just pick up football. It wasn't like Robbie said, hey, I'm starting a ministry. It's just like, hey, you know, if you got time, guys are gonna play some football, we'll do a Bible study or whatnot. So we used to just go on the snow and bang each other onto the snow. Then over time, what we wanted to do was, wow, we can use this as a vehicle, uh, a tournament, to actually bring a lot of other people in, bring a speaker and share the gospel. That's what we did. Sort of really small, with just a handful of guys, but more and more guys started hearing about it. My one Sunday, my friend comes up to me and, uh, and asks me if I wanted to join uh, a pickup game of football. I was like, yeah, because I love football, I love playing, I love watching. So I'm like, yes, I can play. And so all of a sudden we had, you know, go from 5 to 10 to 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 guys coming out on Saturdays to play football together. And so I go and I notice that there are other guys from our sister churches. This is different because we haven't really done anything with the guys except go to church together. So this was new for, for me at least. Since we had a lot of kids, you know, from our church, you know, playing in the MFL, they were reaching out to their friends on the churches and they just invited them on. So we did not even expect the number of kids that started coming. Because when we started char uh, started initially, it was like, hey, just for, our, just for our small church and guys could know each other. But then guys just started inviting other guys to how much fun they were having. Two of my family friends um, were Orthodox. And so when Robbie Abraham made the MFL, which was like the MGOCSM football league, they told me about it and they're like, hey, we're having this tournament. And I'm like, well, maybe I could put up a team. And so the, the way it spread is the kids just started writing other kids from all around the Indian churches just to come and play. I ran to my, my buddy Ronnie and uh, we were just talking about, you know, just catching up and I was telling him how I was playing football. Uh, one weekend I was back in town and he called me and he's like, hey, you know, we're playing football tomorrow morning. Um, you wanna come? And I was like, yeah, of course, you know, I'll come out. And so when we play, for example, whether it be pickup games or tournaments, they'd be churches from all around Chicagoland area that would come together and, and play. I was like in the tail end of my college years, and then after that, they decided to do a, uh, a tourney. Uh, first tournament was kind of crazy because the weather was, wasn't so great. It was one of these crazy, like severe thunderstorms that, that hit. Uh, right when we were supposed to play. We had crazy weather. Uh, the field we were supposed to play on, they shoot us out of there and said, you're gonna ruin the field. So we went back to the field where we normally play in the Plains. It was just snow, rain, I think there might have been hail. And I remember wanting to cancel really badly and Robbie didn't want to. So all of us, we went to this one shelter right next to the park. And I remember Robbie Abraham, you know, talking to everybody like, hey, we have to decide if we want to play in the storm. I think we had six teams, and five teams said yes, one team said no. And Robbie was like, all right, who, what, what is it, what's everyone's vote? And they went around the room, and they're like, we'll play, we'll play, we'll play, we'll play. And they got to us, and we're like, oh, we, we vote to reschedule. You know, but then all my friends, you know, heard everyone, what everyone's else votes were, I'm like, no, we'll play, we'll play. You know, like the whole, like, machismo thing kicked in. And we're like, okay, well, I guess we'll play. And not even halfway through, it, we just called it quits because the weather was just that bad. It was a sleeting and snowing. Everything imaginable in one day, can, that's what happened. It became clear that it was ridiculous to play in this kind of weather. After like the first round, everybody's fingers were so numb. People were just so cold and miserable. It just was too much and we just gave up and, and decided to reschedule I think at that point. So come May, much better weather, 40, 50 degree weather. A uh, beautiful sky, and we had our first sermon scheduled there. So we brought in a speaker in, shared the gospel, and that was exciting in terms of being able to um, 
do what we felt we wanted to do, like use football as a platform to talk about how awesome that is. So that was our very first tournament. So for the next, let's say, 2000 to the, about 2003, 2004, we kept playing. So we, you know, we play on weekends, you know, have our little studies, have tournaments. And then I actually, I switched and left another church. So the, the MFL tournament date was never set. Every like January, February, there's usually those emails, hey guys, you know, we're thinking about this month for the next tournament. Um, scheduling was a big challenge, you know, to get uh, eight or nine or 10 captains to agree on one day that, you know, they can each get 20 guys on one field. It, it's tough. So we didn't know that it died, or at least I didn't know that it died until I was like, hey, shouldn't somebody have said something by now of when the next tournament's gonna be? And so one thing I thought about is like, you know, I didn't do a great job transitioning to the folks that were kind of taking it over. And then over some time, it just stopped, people stopped doing it. That was, that was on me, you know. Being part of the MFL was, I felt burnt out, setting up fields for so many, so many times, you know, like even just me and my brother, you know, sometimes it would just be me and him and nobody would be there to help, even with that. So, I mean, like it was just kind of, frustrating and I felt like doing a tournament alone would have been just impossible. I didn't feel like I had the support and the, and the help and there was, I had just gotten married and it was like kind of, I wasn't as interested in doing it anymore. I, I was hoping somebody else would take over and, um, but I didn't think that anybody, you know, wanted to for a while. That time came, that time passed and I was like, oh, well, I wonder when the next tournament is going to be. It was just, it was just not, it was just not spoken of. I missed it, right? You know, I was just waiting for it to come back. And for a while, I thought, hey, you know, it's just, it was just, a, you know, a lull. You know, and that, that happens, like, in all leagues and, and whatnot. Um, and then it just seemed like, you know, it um, it lost some steam. My brother-in-law's brother, we were just talking about MFL. And we're like, hey, whatever happened to MFL? You know, he's like, I don't know what happened. I'm like, hey, we should try to try to bring him back. Um, at least get, like, the pickup games going again. I'm not sure if it's because I helped or, you know, I'm just like, you know, like, so pro MFL, but guys are like, hey, I heard you're going to start playing, you know, doing the next tournament. I was like, oh, I didn't hear that, but okay. So I talked to Stan, which is one of my good family friends, who was part, who was like one of the leaders in the MGO church. We, we happened to be together and we were talking about it. And then I reached out to, to Jomi. He and I talked and uh, he was working on bringing the MFL pickup games back. And I was like, well, why don't we just combine forces? If I'm trying to put the pickup games together and you're trying to put the tournament together, let's just let's, you know, work on this together. We just kind of talked about these are the things we wanted to do and this is how we thought we were going to do it and these are the things we're going to do a little differently. Like, why don't we just start it up? Why don't we just, you know, take it over and see what we can do with it? Yeah, so back then, we had cones to set the fields up. I don't think, I don't know if we had refs that back then either. I think we still kind of had the old way of doing things uh, where we had um, like each other ref each other's games. It was kind of a, uh, uh, how can I say, not just like a... It was a very scrappy kind of tournament that we put together. Fellas coming on the field to play football. I think it went long and it was, it was, you know, we totally budgeted the time incorrectly. We learned a lot that first tournament, like, hey, we don't want it to be this difficult. We want to make it easy for the captains, we're going to make it easy for us. We want to focus on things that are going to make the tournament better, not necessarily like details that we needed to get done. Now the tournament is an event and it's something that we plan for months ahead. We have video crew, photographers, six refs, food and beverage station. Now, the day before the tournament, we go out there and, and paint the fields. And that adds to the experience. It makes that day feel special. So it's not just a, a day of football. It's more than that. You know, every August, you know, people, you know, you can see stuff that you see on social media, whether it be Facebook or Twitter, or whatever the case is, people are like, hey, MFL's coming, get ready, you know, hey, make sure you don't get married on this weekend, we got, we got a tournament coming, so people, they're just kind of a big hype around the event now, and they've done a great job in terms of also videos and pictures and little clips, it's been, it's been pretty impressive to see logistically, like how, how, what, what they've done today. And now it's such an event. We have our fans come out, parents come out. We have 400 people on that field. 
230 some odd athletes plus 200 fans seeing people from all of these churches on one field it's such a great feeling A lot of people came because they were interested in the game, but were we accomplishing what the vision was for the MFO was the question. You know, it's one thing to kind of like pick up where somebody else left off, but it's another thing to like start something from scratch, you know, something new and original and make it, you know, something very special, right? So those guys deserve all the credit. You know, Rob, it was Rob's vision. He started it, it was his brainchild, and you know, I, I, I was brought in to, to help and I had I think I helped and we did a well for the time that we did it and I was hoping somebody else would take over and um, but I didn't think that anybody you know wanted to for a while you know and, until Jomi you know approached me you know. Yeah we reached out to, to all of them um, to Dinu we spoke to Dinu and he had some uh, questions that you know were thought-provoking like why are you guys bringing it back what's the value? I don't know if you need to bring it back the way it was uh, if there was a season and I think they took a different direction with it. Talked to Rob and you know he was on board. I'm like, do what you gotta do. Like you don't need any anything from me. You go do what you guys wanna do. But one of the things we did talk about too as well is hey, you know, when you think about doing this, um, also think about, hey, um, there's an aspect as well, it's more than just football. You wanted to be able to preach the word to anybody and it be available as that kind of tool to anybody, a resource. They focused more on trying to get, I think, different churches involved. Uh, whereas before we just kind of it was kind of open-ended. Whoever wants to play just come on and play. The challenge there is that we have different denominations. We have Catholic, we have Orthodox, we have Martha Might, we have uh, Kana and Pentecostal uh, teams playing in our tournaments. So to have a general uh, teaching about the Lord is is uh, difficult. You know, my thought was, hey, let's um, let's focus on our community and. Um, you know, use it to build fellowship and camaraderie just within that group. And um, I think uh, Chibi had brought it up to some of the other captains and, you know, went back and forth. And for whatever reason, it, it didn't sound, that change didn't happen, but then we also didn't have a tournament. So we thought it would be better if they used MFL as a vessel, strictly as a vessel, as a bond, so that those captains in those particular churches can talk about Christ in their lives, have Bible studies with their teams, and work that way. So when we got together, I said, look guys, I think we should try this and you know, here, here are some of the benefits. Um, I think it, you know, we should give it a shot. And uh, we did and, and it um, found it to be a value added change, you know, something that benefited the, the community. The good thing about MFL, I feel like is, it offers so many great teachable moments all the time for, for people. I, I was lining up as a receiver and there was one guy from high school who was also lining up as a receiver and somebody just got injured or something happened like the play before and he asked me like, hey, what happened? And I said, oh, um, you know, somebody from the other team uh, got injured and he had to, you know, he, he had to be taken out of the game. And he's like, oh, that's good. And I was like, no, that's not good. You know, because I feel like in high school, you're like, oh yeah, if somebody gets injured, that gives you a better chance of winning. But the difference between like playing in high school, playing college, and playing in MFL is that you, we're not here to win at all costs. You know, there are some costs that we're not willing to, to, to pay. You know, because at the end of the day, it's like to look at the big picture and be like, hey, we're all brothers, and like one team is just sharpening another team. Who would think that just playing a sport, playing a game, could help you grow spiritually? Could help you grow in your faith? I love the fellowship. I love the fellowship of the MFL, the game, the way that we can involve the older guys and the younger guys in one ministry, in one sport. Raji asks me all the time, like, why, why, why do you spend this much time doing this stuff? I don't know, it's just, you know, I, I, I enjoy it, I love it. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those things, like we nurtured it, you know, it's kind of our baby, and uh, we just want to see it continue to grow and add value to the community. and. You know, me personally, I, I've met so many great people through, you know, the opportunity that the MFL provides, right? Those tournaments and those pickup games, and um, and I, I just want that to be available for other people, you know, going forward. So it'd be great if like MFL was just more than just football, but a way for for everyone to kind of like get together and um, build those friendships or share, you know, of themselves with one another in whatever capacity. But I'm not sure how that's going to form.
I want to see new captains, new churches join. I want to see uh, um, other cities join the tournament. I want to set up an infrastructure that can be passed on. So when we leave, that the new people can come on board and, and just take it further without having to restart. We feel like we're accomplishing that goal of being a, a way for people to bond by using the game of football, but are we being effective? Are, are, are we seeing fruit out of this? Are we seeing people getting closer to the Lord? Rob once said that, um, you know, you guys, you know, I, I like what you guys are doing, um, but what does fellowship mean to you? I said, well, you know, fellowship is, you know, a group of people, you know, getting together, and uh, I know it has something to do with faith. But I think he said uh, fellowship is when a group of Christians are together in communion. It just, to me, it was, it was a challenge. Like, how can, I, how can I make the MFL more about you know, true fellowship? My hope is that for this ministry, especially for the older brothers, uh, those who are following Christ, what are you doing to reach out to these younger brothers? Because you just don't realize the power of your conversations with these guys. Are you there to pray for them? Are you there to tell them that to regardless of the countless times they fall into sin, that Christ will accept them again and Christ has already forgiven them. We wanted there to be more. We wanted guys who weren't exposed to Bible study, you know, who weren't interested necessarily in being part of a Bible study to, to be able to share in something that we thought was worth sharing with them. We wanted to share the gospel with them. It is your love for one another, our love for each other, that's going to send a message to this world that is hurting, that is pain, that is divided with all kinds of differences in the world, that we are one. It is a common denominator of Jesus. It says if you're the best team in MFL, if you're the best player, if you're the, the best quarterback or whatever it is, but if you have no love, it is nothing. God will do great things. I think that's what's the great thing about MFL is you know, you know, we had a vision where, hey, we want to you know, reach out to people, create relationships so we can share the gospel. But the great thing is when you create those relationships, God just works. God just works and God just speaks.